Hello, in this video we're going to look at the limit supremum and limit infimum of a sequence of real numbers. Now there are similar concepts, the limit supremum and limit infimum of sets, but since we're in the sequence mode we're going to strictly deal with sequences. <coughs> and so first we need to let a n be a sequence of real numbers. Then the least upper bound of a set of subsequential limit points is called the limit supremum and it's denoted by the limit as n goes to infinity of the supremum of our sequence a n and more commonly it's just you put a bar above the limit sign a n and those are the same now the greatest lower bound of this set of sequential limit points is called a limit infimum and it's denoted by the limit as n goes infinity of the infimum of our sequence of a n also commonly it just put a bar under the limit sign and of, of a n now a, an equal definition for this is is this so the limit as n goes infinity of the supremum of our sequence a n can be thought of like this so if we, um, so for each n, we, we find the supremum of our sequence greater than n, so the tail, and then we do that for the next n of our tail, and then if there's a limit to that, that's what this means, then that's called our limit supremum. And we will, I have three sort of examples that will help illustrate that. And, and also the limit infimum of an can be thought of as this way too. It's the uh, infimum of our sequence in the tail and then the limit of that and that's the limit infimum. Now this represents the supremum and the infimum for the tails of our sequence or tail of our sequence an. Okay, so here, here's an example. Let's say we have a sequence 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 and then a n has three limit points okay so now in the bolzano weierstrass theorem video i put out i define the limit point sometimes called an accumulation point or a cluster point so clearly a n has no limit right because it bounces around from one two three one two three but it has three limit points and what that means is if we put a little confident yeah, that's my statistician in me. If we put a little interval around one, no matter how small, say epsilon, then this sequence is going to be within that interval infinitely many times. And in the same way for two and three. So these are called limit points or cluster points. And those are that's kind of a top topology phrase, I think. But then the limit supremum of our sequence is three so what's the greatest or the least upper bound for this for these three limit points and that's what the limit supremum is it's the it's the uh, least upper bound of all of our limit points and so that's three and similarly the limit infimum of a n is one because that's the infimum of our limit points so now example two um, is this. Let's say we have a sequence that's pretty wide at the beginning and then at some point it just repeats and stays like this forever. So and then the limit supremum would be this point right there, the you know the biggest value that repeats forever. And then the limit infimum is going to be this point right here that repeats forever. Uh, one more example is let's say we have a sequence that does this that that you know that converges to zero but never equals zero then the limit supremum would be zero and the limit infimum is also zero there's only one limit point and and there's some theorems which we're not going to recover if the limit lim sup and the lim inf are equal then of course it's a limit point of that sequence but this is a classic example because the greatest lower bound of our uh, limit points of this sequence is actually smaller than every point in the sequence, which kind of goes against our intuition there. But, but the way we defined it, that's what it is, so zero. Now, 
The next theorem that we cover is, it's a pretty important one. So here we're dealing with sequences of numbers. I'm going to start going into series of numbers. So instead of looking at the individual points, we're going to add up those points, and that's called a series. And then in calculus, era, you know, you, you discuss the uh, root test and the ratio test to see if a series converges or not. And in those proofs, we're going to have to use this theorem. Now, also, if I'm going to look at some calculus books, and if the ratio test and root test are proved in calculus books, I probably won't prove it. But if they're not, then, I, then I'll go back and prove it. And we'll need this theorem. So it's an important theorem. So let's let a n be a bounded sequence of real numbers. And let's let the limit supremum be a. And this is true if and only if for every epsilon greater than there are zero, there are infinite limiting terms of our sequence in this interval here. But only finitely many terms above this interval. Okay. And if we look at this case here, the limit supremum was here. And there's if we no matter how small our interval is, there, there's going to be infinitely many terms in the interval because you know it equals that limit point. But any interval we pick above it, there's only going to be finitely many terms above above this interval. So, and that's kind of the concept of this theorem. And it also is true for the limit in femum. So if there's a if we have a limit in femum of our sequence B. This is true if and only if there's an epsilon greater than zero, there are infinitely many terms of the series in this interval. You know, that kind of makes it a limit point, but there are only finitely many terms below it. You know, and that's really because that's how we define the limit in femum. So we're going to prove one and then leave two as an exercise. So let's go this way. So let's, let's suppose there's an epsilon greater than zero and there are infinitely many terms of a n oh this is a proof by contradiction so we're so let's go back just for so we're going to assume that there is a limit supremum and it's a and and we're saying there's only finitely many terms above this point here but let's assume there's infinitely many terms and show that there's a contradiction so there, we're going to assume there's infinitely many terms above that com, com, uh, interval that's the statistician in me. Let M be the upper bound of A N because it's a bounded sequence. Create a subsequence of the terms with only the terms greater than this the the upper limit on the on the interval. Because that's what our assumption is. There's infinitely terms. So note that the subsequence that we've defined that are only the terms that are greater than than alpha or a plus epsilon then since it's about it's also bounded it's a bounded sequence and by the balzano weierstrass theorem has at least one limit point greater than a now this contradicts what the limit supremum is of a so therefore there are only finitely many terms that are greater than this upper limit that a plus epsilon now, if we go the other way, so we assume that there's infinitely many terms in this interval for any epsilon greater than zero, then uh, we need to show that A is a limit point. Well, that's the definition of this, that A is a limit point. So since only finitely many terms are above um, A plus epsilon of our sequence, a limit point can exist because then then that would be another limit point. So there's only finitely many terms. So that says that A is our least upper bound or the limit supremum of our limit points. And so that the theorem is proved. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. Um, this may come up when we prove the root test and the ratio test. Um, and like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.